Hey subscribers, thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy, this is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're doing Stock Market Weekly Recap number 28 ever in history, guys. We are recapping the August 19th, 2017 week. We're gonna look at what the markets did this week. We're gonna look at some of the stocks that went up and down the most this week. We're gonna look at some of the biggest news stories this week, which we had a ton of them. And then lastly, we're gonna look at what we have to look forward to in next week, what's going on in the stock market next week. Now, before I even get into any of that, do not forget to download The Greatness Inside You Awaits, my motivational book I wrote. It has a lot of backstory on my life and whatnot. That is absolutely free for you guys right now. You can download the ebook for free. Uh, the link is in the description, but it's also, I'll have it probably pinned as the pinned comment, guys. So if you want to download that, it's only free for the next 36 hours. So I hope you enjoy it if you do download it. Now let's go ahead and get right into this. First off, the Dow Jones this week had a very tough week, down 0.8%. The NASDAQ was down 0.6% this week, so not the best week for the NASDAQ. And the S&P 500 was down 0.65%. So just a little tough week there. Now, as far as stocks that went up the most, we had Snapchat up over 18% this week, guys. How about that? Snapchat on a big comeback. Tomorrow, I have a very dedicated video just to Snapchat stock, talking about three reasons why that stock went up so much this week, and what do we, and is this gonna continue on, basically. So that's what tomorrow's video is dedicated towards, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Next stock up here is Alibaba. Alibaba went up over 10% this week. Look at Baba this week, or look at Baba year to date actually, up over 90% year to date guys, absolutely phenomenal performing stock there. And then Yumi, which is a video advertising platform, this one went up over 10% this week, and look at that one, this one's up 62% year to date. So now as far as the downside movers, we had uh, some big moves downside for some stocks. Foot Locker, Foot Locker down over 30 percent this week guys an absolute disaster for Foot Locker this week Dick Sporting Goods are down over 20 percent this week absolute disaster week for Dick Sporting Goods Coach had a very weak week as well. Oh, weak week, I like that word choice. Down over 15% this week. Then we had Advanced Auto Parts down over 13% this week. Look at that on Tuesday, it went down 20% alone on that day. Then we had L Brands, which we're gonna to touch on more in this video. Uh, that one went down well over 11%. L Brands owns Victoria's Secret, Bath & Body Works, and some of those brands, Pink. Uh, and then we had Regal Entertainment Group, the movie, the movie company, or I guess you could say, um, movie theaters and whatnot is what they operate and their stock went down over 13% this week. And to finish off the list here is CenturyLink. CenturyLink went down over 11% this week, guys. So we can see there was definitely some more stocks that made much bigger moves to the downside than upside. And as we see a lot of retail stocks in the downside like normal, guys. Now, as far as the biggest news stories, the biggest news story I was paying attention to actually had to do with politics. And you guys know me, I'm usually like, I like to bury my head in the sand when it comes to politics. I don't like Democrats. I don't like Republicans. I don't like politicians in general. Like, I just hate politics in general, right? Like, I like to focus on what's going to make my life better. No politician out there is really going to make my life better in a major way or worse in a major way. Let's be completely honest. But what really bothers me about what is going on right now in the White House is not like a lot of the stuff that the media is paying attention to and everybody gets caught up into. What I do not like what's going on is the, the short-termness that's going on in the amount of major people being fired or quitting the administration. And this is a big worry for me as an American, as someone that has businesses in America, as someone that um, obviously is invested in pretty much all American companies at the end of the day. This is something that troubles me because what you have is is you have if you're if you're firing people left and right and people are quitting then that means you're probably a very bad decision maker at the end of the day. If I hire, you know, 100 people to come work for I don't know the financial education channel, right? And 90 of them are gone, and especially all the the major ones, then I'm pretty I'm pretty crappy as someone that's hiring people. Like I'm a bad decision maker at the end of the day. It comes down to the decision maker who's making these hires at the end of the day. And if everybody's quitting, like imagine thinking about this. If they Think about if you're you're an investor in Apple and you're you're investing in Apple and then all of a sudden 
You know, you see the chief financial officer, he all of a sudden departs the company. And then all of a sudden the chief chief operating officer, he's gone. And then all of a sudden Johnny Ive, he's gone. And then the chief technology officer and then the chief marketing officer and all these main keys to make things go are leaving the company. You would kind of start to get very worried like, uh, man, is this a company I should be investing in? Why, are, is, why is everybody getting fired? Why is everybody leaving and quitting and things like that? And what you have is a situation where then it's harder to attract talent to come on to your, your administration in this case or your company if you're working in a company because basically who the hell wants to work there? They know everybody gets fired or, or quits very rapidly and that's a very embarrassing thing. So you start, the talent pool becomes less and less and less that you can hire talented people. So which means you have even worse and worse people working for under you guys. So that is really a troubling thing for me just seeing what the underlying theme going on is the short termness and this is, this the short termness and politicians, this is nothing new. Like the, that's one of the biggest problems I have with politics in America is it's so short term in nature. Like you you have everybody working on these, you know, two year and four year plans, but really, you know, they're only working on it for one year or maybe two or three years because the rest of the time they're trying to campaign already again. And they're trying to, you know, campaign and go around the country and, you know, doing all those kind of things. So the amount of time they even get to focus on their job is so bad. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things I see it absolutely biting us in the butt eventually. Uh, I don't know when that will happen, but you know, all the this, all this moving around you can't it's hard to get things done when you got new guys coming in left and right and you're trying to train this person you got somebody leaving the best companies just like the best countries they're usually in positions for a little longer amount of time than you know a few months you got people coming in every every month to a new position every few months like that's a really bad sign that's a really bad sign like the company I work for a quick trip very big company it killed anybody in the convenience store industry it wasn't even close like we were 50 times ahead of everybody else we had the lowest turnover ratio by far in the industry. And when you have the lowest turnover ratio, that means you're probably doing some things right. That means you, people aren't going to work at other places. They want to work at your place at the end of the day, guys. So take it for what it is. Um, you know, it's just, it's just disheartening. Next biggest story up here has to do with L Brand. So this one we just saw had a very tough week. The retailer, which owns Victoria's Secret and Bath and Body Works, they also own the pink brand, by the way, beat Wall Street expectations. It reported record, or excuse me, second quarter earnings of 48 cents per share and revenue of $2.76 billion compared to Thomas Reuters' expectations of 44 cents and $2.75 billion. So a slight beat on revenue and a pretty decent beat on EPS there. But the, the bad stuff was the guidance really a decline in same store sales as we, as as an important measure for retailers overshadowed the earnings beat comparable stores fail, uh, sales fell eight percent the sales decline led the company to lower its earnings guidance for the year to be between three dollars and three dollars and twenty cents from three dollars and ten cents and three dollars and forty cents so we see this is kind of a company in struggle right now but everybody in retail is pretty much a struggle like there's so few companies actually doing well in the retail space right Right now it's unbelievable guys it is unbelievable to me especially when you're in a pretty good economy that this many retailers are struggling but I kind of like this company and we might have to you know do a full dive on this one but you look at this company has a P ratio of around nine has a dividend yield of around six percent it's near its 52 week low if this stock suddenly makes an appearance on four stocks I'm buying September don't be surprised guys because this is an extremely strong brand company like Victoria's Secret Bath and Body Works, like if you took those uh, retail spaces away, those would still be extremely strong brands that they could sell into Amazon or, or whatever retailers of the future at the end of the day, guys, because uh, women at the end of the day, they're probably going to be buying Victoria's Secret bras and panties, whether it's on Amazon or whether it's at a store or things like that, guys. So uh, same thing with Bath and Body Works, the soaps and lotions and whatnot. It's a very strong brand name. So it's a type of company that even if you took away the retail business, which I think their retail business will recover eventually. It's just kind of got to bottom out. Um, it's still a very strong company, so just, just pay attention to that one. That's all I have to say. L Brands, ticker symbol LB. Foot Locker, Foot Locker uh, shares pl uh, plummeted 27.9% on Friday after the company's quarterly results missed expectations by a wide margin. The stock post is biggest daily loss since November 2008 when it fell 28.1%. The Athletic Apparel Company posted adjusted earnings per share of 62 cents on revenue of 1.7 billion for the second quarter. Analysts polled by Thomson Reuters expected them to report uh, basically earnings of 90 cents on 1.8 billion. So 
a pretty good sized miss on revenue, but the bigger miss was on EPS, guys. They were, uh, analysts were expecting somewhere around 90 cents, and Foot Locker did 62 cents in earnings, guys. That is just absolutely horrible there, absolutely horrible. The next one up has something similar to that, Dick Sporting Goods. The Sporting Goods retailer on Tuesday issued softer outlook for 2017 to reflect its increased investment in pricing. Dix now expects to earn uh, between $2.80 and $3 a share on an adjusted basis for its fiscal year. Analysts uh, surveyed by Thomson Reuters were expecting around a $3.09. So there's some troubling things here with Dick Sporting Goods that, that is going on right now that I noticed. Uh, the first one would have to be the what the CEO had to say right here. Like this is just a very troubling statement what the CEO had to say. There are a lot of people, this is his quote, there's a lot of people right now in retail in this industry in panic mode stack at it. They seem to be in panic mode with how they're pricing and we think it's going to continue to be promotional and at times irrational going forward. And basically he went on to say this, he expects this to end no time soon. And we see this in retail right now. A lot of these retailers, pretty much everybody almost out there, guys, 95% of retailers are struggling. Their numbers are all down year over year. So when you have a situation like that, what, what do retailers tend to do? Shoot, we need a cut price. We need a cut price to get the customers in the door however we can. And then that affects everybody because then the next guy has to do it and the next guy and it's just a dominoes falling. Next troubling thing for Dix is something I pointed out to you guys before here. Demand for hunting gear has been trending down. Dick's plunge follows an anemic er earnings earlier this month from Cabela's, uh, a retailer of guns or and hunting and products, Stern Ruger, a gun manufacturer. The FBI reported a plunge in background checks for gun purchases in July. So something I talked to you guys about in regards to gun stocks, I did a gun stock video, I don't know, maybe a year ago or I don't know, six months ago, maybe 12 months ago. And I told you guys that if Trump was elected or when Trump was elected, basically uh, all gun, gun sales are going to go down. Like gun sales are going to go down. The best thing ever in the history of gun sales was President Obama being elected because he was so anti-guns and everybody was scared. Oh, they're going to take our guns away. So I knew if, if a Republican gets in office, that's going to obviously hurt gun sales because then there's not that fear of I need to go out and buy guns right now because they're going to take my guns away or something like that, guys. And we look, the proof is in the pudding here, guys. These are the FBI background checks. And we look literally the month Trump was elected, right? Or the Trump got into office. January 2017, they did, there was about 2 million background checks. The comparable year before, it was 2.5 million. And we look five of the six months so far that Trump has been in office, gun sales are down. Five of the six months, guys. And this is a trend that will just continue to go on because basically there's not the fear of somebody's gonna take my guns, I need to go get guns, guys. So. You know, that hurts Dick's, that hurts Cabela's, that hurts all those companies. You know, it's the exact opposite. I benefited huge from Cabela's stock in 2011, 2012, 2013 because of the huge gun boom in this country. I benefited in a huge way from that, guys. Uh, you know, being invested in that. I saw the wave coming, and now I see the wave moving away from all these gun gun related anything out there, guys. So take that for what it is. As far as next week we go, we got Alta reporting numbers. Alta is probably one of the, the three or five percent of retailers that is actually actually really doing well right now. We have Avago reporting numbers. And lastly, we have Salesforce, otherwise known as salesforce.com, also reporting numbers, guys. So that's kind of what I have looking for next week. That's what we had this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed this today. Leave me a comment on any of these stories today uh, that you were tracking, or if I didn't mention something that happened this week that you were paying attention to that you think can affect the markets, affect the economy negatively or positively. I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section. What are you looking forward to next week? I would love to hear that, guys. If you just came across this channel, you may want to subscribe. We talk personal finance in the channel. We talk entrepreneurship. I'm an actual business owner. I give away so many business tips. We talk stock market investing more than anything, including this series every single Saturday. Thank you for watching, guys, and have a great day.